<laughs> Are we back? Are we back? Did we live? Or am I, or is this stream still down? <laughs> I can't tell. I think I'm good. Oh, you know what? Did it just, oh, did everything just like crash? What the heck? Oh, you know what? All my Godot programs just crashed. <laughs> oh, okay. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Yeah, everything crashed. That was weird. Hold on. Yeah, I think... Oh, you know what? It probably... Like, I probably just had, like, a weird overflow because of the face tracker. Oh. Also, that's crazy. I have 32 gigs of RAM, but I'm already at 30%. Why? GPU? Oh, OBS is using a lot of uh, encoding. That makes sense. All right. Send me one more time. Break my neck really quick. Let's see. This needs to go into stream stuff. FP stream. All right. We're starting from scratch once again. Everyone's been yeeted. Or yoded, if you will. Are we still... That was, it was very, that's, it's weird, yeah. I think, yeah, you know what? I think that's a bug with, uh, with my, my face tracking thing. <laughs> so when I'm keeping track of time, all I'm doing is just counting up the numbers. And so I'm, I was kind of looking at my, my stream time. <laughs> so if we count, if we count the, the numbers up, that it probably overflowed uh, and then just crashed Godot. So I need to... I think I, I, every now and then I need to, I guess, like normalize the uptime. <sighs> All right. Well, that was kind of a mood killer. All right. You know what? Get out of here. We're just going to some music again. I guess we're going to start working. I've lost interest. Goodbye. Guitar. Alright. Turn the music back on. Say goodbye to FL Studio. Well, I think we're going to keep it, this stuff really quick. Wait. Yeah, okay, now we're playing. So let's save this really quick, save as, and we'll just drop this straight into the Ludum Dare folder. So this is assets, this is, I guess, EGM. We'll call this
to see what my stream stats were during that <laughs> really short period of time. It's going to get kind of laggy really quick. Stream summary. Look at that. Plus one follower, and we hit a max viewer thing of 15. Wow. It's actually not a thing, but it's still pretty good. Nothing. It was that loud. <laughs> I turned it up just to, uh, I guess, demonstrate what was being played out of FL Studio. But I forgot to turn it back down. So big sorry, big sorry. So for unit, entity, instance, blah, blah. So this, this is really only used for uh, the scenarios that I'm kind of building out here. And so scenarios have pretty much nothing in them. <laughs> but we, we add the scenario straight to the combat screen. So that's the idea. And so that's how, that's why we have just one combat screen and then one combat screen has all this logic and then we just slap the scenario into it. And it should just work. Should just work. That's the idea anyways. Uh, oh man. Neck is getting sore. Set up from combat data. Uh, probably not. Set up from scenario is probably closer to correct. Set up. Well, let's call it setup, right? 
Why, why make it hyper specific? So set up. All this, goodbye. And then we'll just do... We can do... <laughs> scenario... Hello, hello. Welcome back, Rogue Knight. Yeah. You know what I think happened? Was because this... This thing with its tracking data, right? I actually stored the updated time. Uh... And so it probably just overflowed. And then crashed pretty much all my Godot programs. <laughs> so... That's interesting. If you stream, if you if you have it running for longer than like six or seven hours, I think it was seven hours, it, it'll just take out all your running Godot programs, which is neat. And by neat, I mean it's like a really bad bug that I need to fix at some point. But it's also really hard to test. <laughs> Since uh, you just need to leave it running for a while. Hmm. So set up. I think what this will do is we'll just do scenario. Scenario. Hold on. Do we have the entities? We don't. So let's on ready of our entities. Which is a Y sort is equal to entities. Yeah, we're gonna be going for a while. We're gonna go be, be going for a while, I think. And I'm I think honestly gonna be a lot less coherence as the uh, as the night goes on. Call deferred. That should work. And then we also need to read uh, several things from here. So the objective and the background color. Right, so in our combat screen, let's add a to-do. So to-do. Read. Object. Objectives and background color. Right, and then we can also inject some randomness into it as well. Based off of some value. So, I mean, this is what we have so far. It's not horrible. It's not great. It's a this is a bit too sensitive, it feels like. So let me see. Mm, we can turn it down. Is it here? It's the zoom speed. So let's, let's turn it down to like 15 or something. Yeah, that feels a bit better. It feels really bad though when you're super zoomed out. So I think I need to have some sort of like scaling factor. in order to, to make this feel okay. Oh, <laughs> a little bit of lag there. Not sure what happened. And there we go. You just kind of scoop up the rest of the, the animals. Yeah, I think I need a better way to display objects as well, right? Because I can't just flip them, otherwise the health bar will be incorrect. Oh look, there's the there's the horse that's just leaving. Oh geez. Where are you guys going? <laughs> I still think this is probably the best part. Um, so base enemy, now we need to do enemy, we'll call this like a farmer. Farmer enemy? Farmer. <sighs> so enemies, so there's the farmer. Not too much that we really need to configure besides the sprites. So then, boom, that's it. Look at that. What's the debugger say? So, three errors. Add parameter p child. Where? Where? 
Why are you like this? Ugh, no. Okay, so there, one of these things. Hmm, C++. You know what? It, part of it might be because like I hard crashed. <laughs> part of it might be because I hard crashed. So something's just kind of broke. It's very possible. Nope. Okay, so there's still an error somewhere. I'm not sure where the error is. So this should still be a screen. We're still able to load in properly. Hmm. So we go into combat screen. Oh, you know what? It's because of this. There is no scenario. That's why. That's why it's slightly broken. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Cool. He's figured it out. Yeah, okay. So one, I think I need to have a a better Hmm. Intro, maybe? I don't know. We'll work on the intro after I implement the element. enemies. How about that? So, so enemies, so there's your base enemy, and then there's your farmer. Farmer just has a sprite. Otherwise, all base enemies will work the same. So let's open this up. Hmm. And so what if we just kind of assume... Hmm. Actually, let's add an area to D. So this will be the detection range. So if you're in range, uh, I guess the enemy will try to attack you. Collision shape. So this will just be a big circle. That's easy. So if you are in range, Something like that, right? Let's make it 200, nice and even, even, I should say. And then we'll go into the script. It's so on ready, var, detection, range. Area 2D is equal to detection range. Okay. And now we need to start hooking up all the requisite detection stuff. So detected units. Bar detected units. This is an array, and it's going to be an array of uh, just base units, I guess. So we'll go into detection range, connect several things. Uh, I think it's body entered on detected, right? And then detected a uh, detection range connect. Body exited. So on undetected. Yeah, something like that. Funk on detected. So body node. And then funk on undetected. Yeah, there we go. So we need to check to see if body is in group, um, groups, group, <laughs> groups, group, uh, player, if detected units has, um, body, not has body, then detected units and body. There we go. And then this is very similar. If body is in group, groups, group, player, and then detected units erase body. There we go. Uh, so it's looking like enemies will be like the most complicated ones since they'll have just all sorts of collisions. Although a lot of those collisions will not be activated by default, right? So you'll have several types of attacks. Uh, let's see, first animation will be, let's call it Melee, my favorite Smash game. 
and then we'll have capture. So melee, pretty easy. All it does is it manipulates the position and the, I guess, the disabledness of the collision shape. Yeah. Hmm. Let's have a rest position. Let's have an explicit rest position just so I don't have to worry about, I guess, the transforms of all of these. Let's see. So, there's a few things. Oh, I think I just need to manipulate the collision shape, I think. So, Let's save the position, and then we'll save the, I guess, the disabledness. So this thing will be off, and then similarly, this one will be off, and we'll also save the position of these two collision shapes. Good enough. Then capture. During capture, we'll do disabled off. And then we'll also do this. And it'll just kind of shoot forward, I guess, at the very end. And then we'll have to check to see if any of your units are in range in that, inside of that little area. And if so, then we will, you know, you'll basically just lose control of your unit, uh, I guess. You'll lose control, and I'll apply a force to it, I guess. Maybe that makes sense. Hmm. I guess that makes sense. So it'll just... <laughs> it'll shoot forward a little bit. Eh, something like that. And then, of course, we'll go back to our, I guess, rest position afterwards. You know what? It should probably have, like, a little wind-up as well. So for half a second... One of these. So let's actually duplicate the key as well. So... At the very start, it's disabled. Then it turns on and then shoots out. Right? So then this is what it's gonna look like. Boing. Yeah. And then it resets. Then similarly for melee, we'll do melee attack. That's disabled position. And then it'll just push out. So at maybe like half, we'll turn it off. Store the position here, and then here, push out. We'll push out pretty far, I think. Just to make it kind of devious, you know? Yeah, and then after every single attack, we'll have to reset the position. That's fine. <sighs> Connect animation finished. Self on anim finished. I just happen to know what the, the function signature is supposed to be. Anim finished. Um, this is anim name string. And that's it. And so we can match on the anim name. So match anim name. Let's see. We'll have two two things, so there's either melee or capture. Those are the only two choices, so we can hard code it and I don't have to feel bad about it. So on melee or on, on capture, or pretty much on any animation, right? It's pretty much just, uh, like it doesn't matter what the animation name is, as long as I just like reset 
So I, I need to always call NM player play rest to kind of reset all the shapes. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah, so we can take out this part. There's nothing we need to do after that. Yeah. So this detection range, and then, hold on. And the process function, this is pretty important. Process function, um, if detected units size is greater than zero, then we want to do a thing. Probably just like pursue the unit. And then try to attack it. So then we also need to have a timer. You know what? I think I'm just gonna have a counter. This is like action counter. Action counter. So we'll, this will be a float. Or like new action counter. New action counter. And then var or unwritten const the new action time. So we'll calculate a new action probably like every 10 seconds or something like that. And then we have var is state is action locked, is action locked. So whenever it's playing an animation, it should, or I guess, yeah, whenever they're playing an animation, AKA doing one of the attacks, we should not try to create a new action, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll do that somewhere. So if detected units size is greater than zero, then it should do something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll also do new count, new action counter plus equals delta. Or no. If not is action locked. Then we'll do this. And then we'll also have to check if new action counter uh, is greater than or equal to new action time. Then we'll do a thing, I guess. <laughs> Let's see, new action counter is equal to zero. I mean, that's pretty obvious. And then to do add uh, I guess, action stuff. But otherwise, I think what should happen is that probably, like, the enemy will just chase. They'll just chase you. And then more than likely just get, like, absolutely torn up. <laughs> Right, because they have a hurt box. So this is the hurt box. Hurt box. Mm -hmm. So we do a hurt box. Connect. Uh, body entered. Self on hurt box. Let's see. Plunk on hurt box. Some sort of body. Node. And then we need to check. If body, hold on, I'm gonna, uh, is player, is player unit, basically. So, body node returns a bool, so return body is in group, groups, group, Player, yeah. 
is player unit body. So I'm just wrapping this in, uh, I guess, this helper function here because it's a bit more concise and it's more readable as well. So if whatever. And then we also need to have like a receive damage function. So function receive damage. And this is also one of the one of the problems with this current implementation is that there's a lot of repeats, but I also don't have the time to go back and redo everything. So that's unfortunate. Let's see, export. We need to have an export var health. Some sort of float. We'll call it 10 by default. Then receive damage. We can just more or less copy and paste these two. Yeah, I think the the, the building logic and the just the, the like building logic and enemy logic is very very similar. Hilariously enough. So let's add a tween. Yeah, let's kill tween. You'll also have a kill tween. Give me, give me the, give me this. Kill tween. Kill tween. And let's grab that. Kill tween. Some sort of tween. Boom. Kill tween. And then we need to set that up here. copy and paste all of this, doesn't matter. Ooh. What's different? Oh, it's the, the tween duration. That's fine, that's fine. Uh, and then we need to have kill tween complete. Mm, I think that's fine doesn't have anything to spawn, so it's pretty much just um, once the tween is complete, aka like the, the unit will just fade out, that's the idea. Once the, the unit is done fading out, then we just remove the unit. So it cleans itself up nice and easy. So uh, all right, I'm gonna be right back, I'm gonna get, get more coffee. Got to use my AFK screen once again. Let's see. Oh no, you know what? I forgot to do my, my Duolingo. Oh no. It's okay. I think I had a streak freeze. <laughs> oh no, dude. Feels bad, man. Feels bad. Hmm. Hmm. Went live on Twitch. Packages on the way. That's cool. I'm just, I'm just playing on my phone at this point. <sighs> How long have been have I been at this? Actually, shouldn't actually doesn't Twitch send you a stream summary at some point? 
or did it not? Uh, is it is this still counting the current stream as like a one stream? Hard to say. Hard to say. I don't know. So this is what we have. Um, so we have the kill tween, detection range. Okay, so we still need to implement melee attack and actually melee attack doesn't really need to be hooked up to anything because there's no signals to fire, right? Because all it's doing is just pushing your units <laughs> to make it, I guess, slightly more difficult for you. The only one that we need to really hook up is the capture attack, so capture attack connect and then this is going to be body actually what is capture attack capture attack is an area 2d yeah it's a body answered i think itself on capture yeah that's really it so on hurt box if is player a unit hold on implement this first and then we'll finish up the other stub on capture body node if is player unit so to do stub <sighs> Gonna lean back for a little bit. Try not to flip my chair over. All right, let's go. I don't know how people like just sit in a chair for like the entire day though. Whenever I sit in a chair for too long, my, my back starts to hurt. Or maybe I'm just sitting in a chair incorrectly. I've been doing it wrong this entire time, which is very possible. My eyes. Let's see. Oh my god. Actually, it's not bad, I think. Yeah, I still have... Has it been eight hours? Oh my god. How many people are streaming uh, Ludum Dare? I just do this live on stream. Super auto pets. I know that's pretty, uh, it's popping off. Luxembourg. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Where am I on that? <laughs> so, most of people, it looks like most people are doing Unity. Unity's always good. Yeah. Most people are doing Unity. Yeah. I feel like Godot should be more popular, but maybe I'm just crazy. Like, that looks like it's, um, this looks like Game Maker. This is Godot. This is also Godot. Okay, well, shows what I know. <laughs> oh, and this is also Godot. I missed it. I'm gonna take a stab with raw, raw Python. It's gonna be tough, though, right, with Raw Python? Because if you want people to be able to play your game, Easily, you'll have to redistribute the uh, a Python interpreter with it. That's tough. That's tough. Starting to get distracted. <laughs> Starting to get distracted. Uh, uh, I probably shouldn't be showing some of these on stream, by the way. <laughs> some of these are somewhat privileged. Okay, that's fine. Send it. Okay. And then there's Gido engine, but blah. I'll 
figure something out. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a few tools, right, for, I guess, making a an executable, a Python executable. I think the the piece of software that I'm using right now for face tracking uses it. It's like a Py, I think it's called Py Installer. I think that's what it's called, Py Installer. Yeah, Py Installer. But I think it, it might be Windows only. I don't know. Don't really do that kind of Python stuff. <sighs> Let's see. If it is player unit, then we can assume that it has a damage value. So we'll do body dot damage. Uh, no. Receive damage. Yeah. Receive damage body dot damage. Something like that, right? No. Uh, oh, this needs to be damage float. I'm just copying this over. Boom, boom. So, all enemies have health. Therefore, this should just work. Oh, and there needs to be a health bar as well. Oh, no. Hmm. Give me one sec. So base enemy will also give you a progress bar. Hmm. And we'll do it in a similar way to uh, buildings, I guess. So. Size, we'll make it 32. No, <laughs> I made the same mistake before. 32, percent off. Let's see, position needs to be negative 16. Let me call it 32. Maybe not 32, make it negative 40. Negative 36. That's an acceptable level. And then we'll also have the same stuff Hmm. See, the more I look at this, the more I'm kind of thinking, maybe I should just make enemies like a... A static. <laughs> Inherit from a, a base building. So enemies are just buildings. Because there's a lot of overlap. Uh, I know I shouldn't do that, though. I know I shouldn't do that. Base enemy. We'll call this health bar. So this is in base enemy health bar. Health bar. This is a progress bar. Health bar. Okay. And then in process, we'll do this. That's pretty easy. Just make the health bar more visible, less visible, based off of whatever, right? How often you interact with that enemy. But when you receive damage, we need to really jack up the modulate value. Let's see. And then also health bar max value is equal to your health. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's easy. And then once you take damage, receive damage, that should, yeah, okay. Now that's all the same stuff. How nice. Kill tween, yeah, yeah, yeah. So on capture, now that's the hard part. So each unit, so this is what we're working with still. By the way, nothing has really changed. There's no enemies on screen, which is what I'm currently working on. Boing, boing, boing. We slap pretty much everything, right? <laughs> so there's a lot of things, and you'll just slowly accrue more and more things. Not really any upgrades, but I don't know. I need to. I, I still need to think about. 
what would make a fun level? Right? I guess like having different objectives would make things fun. But hmm. Possibly being able to upgrade like the I guess it's statistics of the things that you can save, maybe. I don't know. When base enemy captures you, though, I think what we need to do is have the death ball, which is this thing right here. Player, death ball, tech scene. And so the death ball is just this sprite here, so that you're able to see it, right? Um, so death ball. Don't need this. I think this still needs tuning. Still needs tuning, because it's a bit too excitable, I guess. has body, then units append body, body animation player, play reset, and then the base unit. What I think we want to do is actually store a reference to the death ball. The body death ball equals self. So that there's the reference, and then, hmm, base enemy. On capture, we can do this. We'll do body dot death ball units erase body. That's a bit weird. But I think it'll work. So the idea is that if if it gets captured, basically, uh you'll just lose control of the unit. So I guess you'll just need to add it back somehow. And I think what we also want to do is, since we can assume that, you know, if it's a player unit, then it must be a base unit. And if it's a base unit, we must be able to, you know, apply a central impulse. So we'll do base enemy. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do something like this. Apply central impulse. Blah, blah, blah. All of this. And we'll just kind of like launch it. Actually, then that means we don't need the melee attack at all. Right? It's it's pretty much the same idea. So the melee attack like doesn't make you lose control, but capture does. Hmm. This doesn't really make sense. Let's just do this. Body, apply central impulse, full position. Body, goal position, like that. There we go. So we want to launch it. Wait. I think this launches it towards it. Which we don't want. What if we... So I think we, what we want to do is... Turn this around in the opposite direction, and then we'll just multiply by, like, launch speed. Launch speed. So, let's call it 20. What, what is the death ball speed? Death ball speed is 10. We'll make this 20. Just to make it, I guess, inconvenient for the player, right? So this is launch speed. So on capture, it'll do this. I think I can get rid of melee attack. 
I don't think melee tech makes a lot of sense. I think uh, capture attack does make sense. So let's go to animation player. Melee, we don't need this anymore, so we will remove melee. Capture, we still want. I think I'm going to change the name to like just launch. So it's a launch, and then this is a launch attack. Oh, and then we need to change this stuff. Uh, because now, when we try to play the animation... Oh, okay, no. It, sometimes this breaks. When you, um, when you have an animation, and then you change the name here of the parents, sometimes it breaks. The theme is unstable. Oh, yeah. The theme is unstable. So this is what I've got going so far. Um, I don't feel too bad about <laughs> sharing it. Uh, so it's literally a pun. So we're you are farm animals and you are, uh, you know, it's a giant horse death ball. You are trying to unstable, <laughs> get it? Because farm animals live in stables. Uh, your fellow animals. Uh, and the way you control it is very unstable. It's a very unstable death ball, right? So it's kind of hard to keep them all in one place. And then you're just trying to gather more and more animals to your cause. Very unstable, yeah. You win, yes. That is me. Yeah, so that's the idea. So the, the basic mechanic works. So you're able to gather a lot of stuff the performance is not too bad, but I have yet to see how this works in HTML5 exports. Uh, what I'm trying to implement right now is enemies. So the enemies, all they really do is you, or is they, they kind of launch out an attack. They make you lose control of your units, so you need to like, I guess, re-gather them all. And of course, if I, <laughs> I think if a single enemy kind of like launches an attack and knocks out all your units all at once, I guess that's a that's a fail. You lose. <sighs> that's the idea. That's the idea. Hmm. So this is the launch attack. There's a t detection range. Because I, I don't think I want to have your enemies just know where you are at all times. I think once one of your enemies just kind of like falls into their detection range, I think it makes sense for them, the enemies start following whatever unit entered and then just try to, to launch it. <laughs> no, no, you win. No, you win. No. No you, etc, etc. Let's see... Oops, I'm losing a lot of steam. I think my, my OBS crashed, but I, I have been live for... Since the jam started. Actually, even before the jam started, so... Trying to figure this out. Once I have this working, I can start doing more UI stuff. So it, it, it kind of it's kind of more cohesive. Because right now it's just like a test level, which is still kind of cool, I guess, but it's not really a game. Let's see. This I think works on capture. That's actually not really correct anymore. Let's change this to launch. It's just the launch attack. This needs to be changed to launch attack as well. Now we need to fix all the errors. Boom, boom. There's no such thing as melee attack anymore. Because melee attack and launch attack did pretty much the same thing. So boom, launch attack on, launch. And then here, boom, boom, on, launch, launch, launch. Getting a little hungry, by the way. <laughs> um, although it is 
pretty late. I don't think anywhere is open. Maybe some places are open. Let me see. There actually are some places that are open, weirdly enough. Yeah, 44 minutes. Oh, no. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. There is a just like a 24 hour convenience store. Like on my block. But it's it's always super sketchy whenever I walk in there. <laughs> and also like the outside of the store smells like this. A hundred percent of the time. Especially when it rains. So that's how you know it's a good convenience store. <laughs> uh, let's see. Here. Not is action locked. I think. Hmm. Detected units size. Greater than zero. I think what we're just going to do is move and slide towards detected units zero. We'll just get the first position, uh, the global position. So we want to get the direction towards that unit. So we want to move in that direction basically. So our global position. Is that correct? So death ball, how does this work? Global position minus. Okay, so this needs to be global position minus this position. Global position normalized times, I guess, our speed. So export var speed float. So we'll make this, I don't know, like a, like a 10, I guess. So times speed. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think that's fine. So we'll always be moving towards your unit. Your new action time will be 10 seconds and then we'll probably just uh, I guess mmm mmm Launch attack. Launch attack. Mm. Let's have another variable. So, or is action locked? Is action locked is equal to true. So now we don't want to recalculate a new action, but what we want to do is if detected units is greater than zero, We'll do if is action locked, uh, then we'll want to do anim player play launch. There we go. Easy. And also, I think we want to do launch attack. Uh, face. How do you? Look at, yeah, look at detected units zero. I think that's okay. Look at, oh, it needs to be a point, a vector two point. So this needs to be vector two global. Okay, so let's do this. Um, unit position. Some sort of vector two is equal to detected units zero global position. So we cache the value, unit position there, and then this one, unit position, there we go. Should be fine, and then anim player finished, yeah, is action locked. So once we start, once we finish launching our action, once we start, finish launching our attack, we will 
now we'll be eligible to start, uh, you know, charging up our next attack. And then we'll also try to reset all the values at the same time. Oh, and then uh, we don't want to do this multiple times, so I'm glad I've caught that. So if enum name is rest, do nothing. Yeah, okay, cool. So let's open up the combat screen. We just kind of have everything hard-coded for now. Let's go, let's open up Farmer. Farmer, we'll put you here, why not? Give it a try. Oh. Seems to be <laughs> running away very slowly. Send, get sent. Yeah, okay, interesting. So that's weird. Oh, it's because of, um, the initial position stuff. Ah, I see, I see. So I, I don't think I can just... I don't think I can just have a farmer there. I think I need to use a spawn point. It's a bit weird, but that's fine. Farmer, entities, enemies. Farmer. All right, so that should work. Yeah, there we go. So, the farmer sees us and then he starts moving in the opposite direction. He starts running away. <laughs> Very slowly. Uh, so, let's see. Speed. I think the, the default speed needs to be like 50 or something. And then, this one needs to be... Is it unit position? Unit position minus global position. Let's give this another try. Okay, now he's now he's chasing us. Yeah, hard to tell if it's doing. Oh, okay, it worked. Yes. But there was no <laughs> skill effect, which is fair because I have not added a any actual effect yet. So, here for collision shape What's a debugger, by the way? Add collision exception only works between two objects of physics body type. Okay, so this needs to be get child zero. I think that should work, maybe. No errors, hopefully. Okay, hold on. Two objects of physics body type. Hey. So, is this a physics body? This is a physics body. Is, is an area 2D a physics body? It is not. Yes, okay. Okay, so we don't need to do this, that's fine. Nice, so we're, we're actually starting to optimize here, somehow. Let's add a sprite for the this part. So this is our, our unit. Let's add a, I guess a push sprite. What would, uh, I guess what would the attack look like, right? Is it just like a fireball, something like this. Basically like a slash. It's like a banana at this point. A very aggressive banana. They make it mint colored. This is actually a really nice. I like this color. This is very calming. Yeah, this is like a. It's not even like a mint. This is more like a pastel. Pastel mint? Is mint like already a pastel color? I'm not sure. Anyways, there you have it. Something like that. Exports. 
Then we'll go back to base enemy. So all base enemies will more or less just have the same, I guess, sprites for their launch attack. So let's do, let's, let's add a sprite to this. Load, assets, enemies, animation. This will be eight by six. Then the frame will be 47, question mark? Yeah. Okay, and then the sprites should not be visible either. So in the animation player, so in rest, let's, let's try to do everything all at the same time so for maximum confusion. So the rest, this should not be visible. But during launch, still not visible, but here, once it starts moving, it is visible. Something like, something like that. Or you know what? Let's move the position even farther back, so the collision shape should be like here, right? Uh, so what is this? This is six. Let's just move this back to six as well. So it'd be like that. Then rest, this needs to be six. Yeah. Okay, cool. Just one more try. One more try. So we have your enemy. Can't really tell if they're doing anything. I'm just kind of waiting for them. Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay, cool. So I think something that would be kind of cool is... Well, one, health bar should not be visible by... Well, health bar should be modulate zero by default. And then in that animation, they should like... I guess glow red for a little bit, just to indicate that they are about to launch an attack. So let's grab just the entire sprite, right? So this is your rest position. So they're modulates. Yeah, let's just do that. Boom. Launch. One of these, and we'll flicker kind of like, like deep red. Boom. Back to white, back to red. Back to white, back to red. And then back to white. I think that's fine. And then farmers should inherit that. So we have the animation player, so you'll, you'll they'll basically just flash like that, so you know that there's an attack coming. Otherwise, I feel like it's kind of cheap. Please do an attack. Okay, that's actually not nearly enough time to react. Okay. So we can kind of extend this out to just be two seconds long. So these need to be moved out to like one second. And then we just can space these out at whatever intervals I feel like. Move these over a little bit. Yeah, that's fine, right? <sighs> Alright, so try not to kill the farmer. Alright, that's okay. And then if you have a lot of farmers, I think, or you have a lot of enemies, I think this will be okay. Cool. I'm gonna use the bathroom. <laughs> the coffee has now run through me. So in probably about two hours, I'll probably be completely knocked out, uh, but I'll, I'll be right back.
hello, hello. I'm back. Uh, so combat screen. Here's an idea. So if we just have like a lot of spawn points. And this is how I'm going to be probably uh, constructing the, what you call it, the, what's the word? The scenarios, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the scenarios will most likely just be a bunch of spawn points plus like buildings and stuff. Um, and then I guess like having some optional spawns or whatever for now. Uh, so you'll have a little bit of randomness, but I think a lot of the big pieces like building placement and whatever will not be random. Anyways, here are all your units. You can like slap into all of them. Bling, bling. And I think I'll probably start you with a few units already under your control. I wonder if there's a, like a better mechanic for like, um, if there's a better mechanic for, I guess, gaining control of a unit. Hmm. I don't know. We'll need to think about that. Right now, you just instantly gain control of a unit, so it's not too difficult. Hmm. Anyways, on kill tween completed. Wait. Oh, here we can do speed is equal to zero. So basically, just stop the unit in its track, in its tracks. I should say. And then also, your, this unit should not be able to... Uh, should not be able to launch any attacks after it's been killed. Because <laughs> that might be a bit cheap. Let's do, is action locked? We can just lock the action prematurely. Something like that. I think that's okay. I think that's okay. So let's go into Lidum Dari. Get add all. Get, get commits, um, add enemy attack. Start initial work on BGM. Oh, okay, I, got it. I messed it up. There we go, there we go. <sighs> Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Hmm. Okay. I think now I just need to create a one scenario, be able to load that into the combat screen, uh, and then I think I would be comfortable calling that good enough for now. And then we can move on to working on a few more of the UI bits. Yeah, let's do that. So here is the base scenario. This is the code for it anyways. So this is what each scenario will just look like. And then I'll have just a list of scenarios that can be included. Yeah, I think the, the really, really big brain way to do this would just be like, making each scenario or writing a tool so that I can extract positions and then just pass them around as like JSON files. Um, or I guess that's not the big brain way, that's like the extendable way, that's the good way, that's how I would want to do it. However, I don't have time to do that. So we're just going to kind of cheat <laughs> cheat it. Well, I'm not cheating, but I'm, I'm this is not how you should be doing a lot of this stuff. This is not the good way of doing it. That's probably a better way of saying it. So let's call this intro scenario. Wait. Hold on. No. Test scenario. <laughs> 
Easier, easier. So test scenario. Oh, and you know what? A good thing about this system, since what I'm doing is each scenario is just a Y sort, and then whenever I load in my combat screen, I'll just throw in the scenario into the entities thing. So it, it should just work. So test scenario. So this, this makes it easy, so I can have like a tutorial scenario. Uh, and that's really easy, you just load in the combat screen with a tutorial scenario and then that should just work. Tutorial scenario, what I'm kind of envisioning is that, you know, you'll be given control of just one unit, you know, and it demonstrates like, oh, you can destroy objects in order to gain more allies. Uh, this is how you fight people, and then you'll be in a, like in an enclosed arena. So there's the the lose condition. I guess it's it's hard to hit the lose condition. I guess. What I'm thinking the lose condition will be, the the more that I think about it, right? So each enemy, more or less, will. Uh, they're really their only attack is the push. Uh, push away your units and so so that you no longer have control over them right so the lose condition is probably like if you lose control of all your units and you're not able to regain control of them in like a certain amount of time right so part of that means that I need to <laughs> increase increase the launch speed so we'll increase it to like 100. And we'll see how this feels. So these are all your units. Look at that. I think once the enemy has a lock on you. Oh yeah. Once the enemy has a lock on you, they should probably just never lose their lock on you. So we can take out undetected. So once you go into their field of view, uh, they got you basically. Okay, yeah, and see, that, that's that's the difficulty, is that now you need to find all your units and bring them back. <laughs> and then just continue slapping the, the enemies. No, duck, come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that, that's, I think that's a cool idea. I think that's a cool idea. So each unit, the, 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 I guess the challenge is maintaining enough units in order to fight all the, the enemies. Uh, I guess trying to dodge their attacks as best you can with your unstable death ball. Yeah. I think this part I still need to figure out a good way of doing it. So. I need, I need like a way to find the closest units. See, the problem is that you can pos you can have a lot of units that are detected. <laughs> That's the problem. So I'm what I'm, I don't want to just I don't want to rotate through like I don't want to do a for loop like four four I in detected units right? Because what if you have like forty detected units? Then it, it becomes really really cons time consuming, I guess. But I also don't want to just randomize which unit it is, so that's why I'm just using the, the first one. I don't know. What if I just make the detection range a, a lot higher, I guess? So, the detection range, collision box, we'll make this like, I don't know, like a 600. It's like, it's big. It's big, but it, it does not immediately trigger. Um, it does not immediately trigger uh, all the units on the map, usually. Hopefully. Maybe it will. Yeah, it does not immediately trigger, but it's pretty... It triggers pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. So now we're out of range, but now we <laughs> just send them back in. Get them. Get them. And then punt them all. So now I no longer have units, and now I should probably lose within some sort of time.
time frame. Okay, that makes sense. Sounds good to me. I think, is it? Collision Shape 2D. I think I also would want to make the radius customizable per unit. Perhaps. So some units have a short uh, detection range, some units have a big detection range, I don't know. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So let's actually... Let's... Mm, farmer... Mm, detection range. Let's make this like a, like a 400. Make unique. Save. Base enemy. We'll want to clear this out. So there's no default collision shape. Yeah. So every new enemy will need to I'll, I'll need to define the collision shape as well as define uh, speed and health. Yeah. So then you'll have like different units. For example, we can have like a soldier unit or something. Right. So look at this. I don't know. There'd be like, what's a, what's a police officer look like? What, what, like what what is a one of the the UK police officers hats? It's like something like that. It's basically just like a bucket that they wear on their head. Looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Also, what am I doing? I need to create the scenario. I'm getting distracted. Okay. So, let's actually go back to combat screen and then we can just copy a lot of this stuff over. Actually, we can copy all of this stuff over, right? So, just boom, 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 boom. Copy, paste, yeah, look at that. And then we'll just spawn it in like this, right? Yeah, and so we go back to combat screen, grab all these, delete. And so all of these should be copied correctly. Combat screen, this is fine. Uh, Starting to throw an error, but that's fine, I guess. Then base scenario. Hmm. And then let's let's we can do a really quick null check since this only runs once. Should be fast enough. So if not if so if scenario sin scenario then we'll do entities called a third add child scenario. Uh, Else we should try to load in just like a default scenario, which is what. No, no. Hmm. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Hmm. Hard to say. Title menu. Let's do this. So new screen, that's our combat screen. Uh, of course, this is already kind of debug, so we're, this is like two layers of debugging deep. Debug again. <laughs> so var scenario is equal to load, whatever this is, instance. So new screen dot scenario is equal to scenario. Okay, so hopefully that should just work. I don't know. New game. Okay. Well, that's unfortunate. <sighs> Hold on. So did nothing really load in? Oh, okay. Interesting. So test scenario. Should be all of these. Hmm. 
Oh, you know what? It's because of this. I forgot to turn it back on. Right, so here we just need to call setup. No more orphan nodes. Yeah, there we go. Oh, the animation players for the base units are kind of broken. Not really sure why. No, those are right. What? So if we play, yeah, that's how it should look. They should just be bouncing up and down. Now if we look at brown horse, yeah, that's fine. How about duck? Rubber duck, that's fine, right? You just bounce up and down as well. White duck, you bounce up and down. That's weird. I don't know. <laughs> Hard to say. Just kind of try to roll these guys. Yeah, see, that's fine. Ooh, no. <laughs> some of them, some, someone got launched. I only have the duck. Oh. <laughs> I, I like that, yeah. I, I like how they just kind of get launched. <laughs> and the attacks kind of like uh, follow the follow the enemies. It's interesting. So, unstable ball of death. And then they just launch. Now I don't have any end. No animals in my control. I'm trying to hit these guys. Bah. No! Kill him. All right. Give me more friends. Yeah, see, these guys work correctly. That's weird. Anyways, it totally works. <laughs> Heck yeah, dude. Heck yeah. Oh, I've been working on this for eight and a half hours straight. Even though the stream says I've only been working on this for one and a half hours. My stream did go down <laughs> about seven hours in. So that's pretty cool. Thank you, OBS. Uh, yeah, let's start working on the UI stuff. And you know, you know what? Really quickly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get a snack. <laughs> so I get hungry. to do something pretty degenerate. <laughs> uh, I don't really have any snacks. I need to go to the grocery store. Uh, but what I have instead is uh, just peanut butter. It's looking kind of expired though. Like does peanut butter usually have like, what is this, it's like peanut oil? I feel like peanut butter isn't usually this oily, but maybe I'm weird. Maybe I'm just imagining things. Anyways, I'm about to just eat some straight up peanut butter from the jar. Pretty good. Gotta feed that brain power. And I suppose also I don't, um, I did work out today. So, you know, we're, uh, we're bulking. We're bulking. See, the problem when people say that they're bulking, they don't usually ever, uh, stop bulking. And also, they're probably not trying to get super big, which is uh, true in my case. I'm not trying to get like super duper big. I've done that before, once in my life. And you know, it was it was kind of a cool feeling being like a 
having like muscles and all that. That's, uh... Blood pen. Maintaining muscles is hard, man. <laughs> oh. That's late. I still need to do sound effects. Oh, uh, you know what? I can do that really quick. While I'm like very slowly just eating peanut butter straight from the jar. <laughs> uh, screen size. So. This is one of the things that was allowed by the rules, by the way. You're allowed to use a sound effects generator. Even if you're, like, doing a compo. Is this peanut butter oil, by the way? I've never seen this before in peanut butter. Hmm. So I'm just kind of tilting the jar. So, sort of like, the, the liquid that's in it. is not in the path. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. So when you... Oh, man. The more that I kind of dig into this peanut butter, the more, like, liquid that pours out. I feel like this is not correct. <laughs> I should probably stop eating it. For multiple reasons. One, I mean, that's a lot of, uh... Think of the calories. Probably horrible for me. But on the other hand, there's also, like, I don't recognize this liquid that's coming out of the peanut butter. Tastes pretty good, though. <laughs> What is RFX Gen? It's like the so it's a, it's similar to one of the programs listed here. So content generators are allowed. In fact, they're encouraged, especially exemptions for the compo, and then also by extension, it's especially exemption for the jam as well. So SFXer. I don't think that this has been updated in a while. But RFX Gen is the, I guess the Raylib version of it, SFXer. So Raylib is a pretty fancy, uh, a pretty fancy uh, a C library for graphics. Also, guess what your boy found? Your boy found some Swiss cheese. <laughs> Absolute rat. Just looking for things to eat in my kitchen. The high caffeine concentration has stirred my appetite. Yeah, so it does things like that. I like this one. Let's save it. Let's go to Ludum Dare 49. Let's add this to quick access. This needs to be one of the top ones since I'm going to be going back and forth. That's BGM. These are going to be SFX. Mm. So this is probably just hit. Just put the <laughs> cheese slice straight on my desk. Okay. What am I doing with my life? Uh, this is hit. One. No, that's not how I name things. Hit one. 
Or, this is like a smack, right? Hit it with a smack. Smatch. Smack. There we go. I like that. Export the wav, the wave. So this is smack one. Sounds pretty good. Hmm. That's pretty good too. Save sound. This is smack two. RFX. Export the wav, the wave file. Two, smack two. Give me another one. No. 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 Eh. No. Eh. Eh. No. No. Yeah. I love it. So RFX Gen, you can find it on... I don't know. I mean, you can just like Google it, right? <laughs> Should be available just on itch.io. Highly recommended. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. No. Hmm. 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 No, that's not bad either. Hmm. Hmm. No. I like that one. Explode one. RFX. This is explode two. Oh, you know what? I forgot to export it. Explode two. This needs to be. Explode. No. Explode two dot wav. Then we need to load in explode one. Export this as explode one dot wave. That's really it, right? Hmm. Hmm. No. No. Well. Maybe. Oh, hello. KT, how are you doing today? Thank you very much for the raid. You, you, you caught me at a weird time in my life. I am currently just eating whatever scraps of food I have in my kitchen. Because I'm doing the ludum dare combo stuff. But thank you very much. So this is what I have so far. Uh... I think I've, I've spent eight hours, stream crashed once, so... <laughs> so, the theme for this Ludum Dare is unstable, so... Based off of a pun, we are now a bunch of farm animals that are trying to... I guess... Oh no! That are trying to unstable, <laughs> get it, free all your farm animal friends from a bunch of other stables. So you are, I guess, literally unstable unstable stuff. So you need to fight them, and also, because it's a big death ball of just animals, it is also unstable. Haha. <laughs> Haha. <laughs> but, thank you very much for the raid. Oh, it's Craft Engineer, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm delirious. But thank you very much for the raid, Craft Engineer. <laughs> and thank you very much, KT, for the convincing yeah, so this is what we have so far. Uh, what I was trying to do is generate some sound effects while I was eating some just cheese slices. <laughs> um, but I think the, the kind of data structures I have going on right now, so there's just the one combat screen, and then it's configured by just scenario files. Uh, so hopefully that should make it pretty easy for me to generate new levels. Thank you very much, Craft Engineer, for the follow. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, got to doing Ludum too. Very nice, very nice. It's a clever use of the theme. Yeah. Thank you very much. It was. <laughs> someone was making a pun about it in chat, so <laughs> I was like, wow. I think it was supposed to be a joke, but I took it literally. I think 
The idea is not bad. Clay missed the student loan myself. I think you, you still have time to do the... You're only about eight hours late. That's not too bad, all things considered. Looks like your game is far along for eight hours in. It's, 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 it's alright. It's alright. I still need to do UI stuff. I, and I still need to have, I guess, a more of a... I need more of a... I guess a gameplay loop. Because right now, your only fail state... See? Once the enemies knock your, your, uh, your animals away, you lose control. But that's really the only failure state right now. The success states, I think I have it down. It's, it's like a Katamari Damasi kind of idea, right? So it's like, you know, destroy X amount of structures or, you know, kill this many enemies or grow your death ball to be this many animals, something like that. Katamari RTS, yeah. That would be pretty cool. Something like that. It's not really an RTS, since they all they do is just follow your cursor. <laughs> Actually, where do they go, by the way? They have pretty much infinite uh, momentum, by the way. So I'm not, I'm not sure where they went. I guess I just lost. Yeah. But here are the sound effects I'm working with right now. What is this one? I, I just forgot what I was doing. Nope. I don't know. What was I doing before this? <laughs> oh, you know, I was generating sound effects while I was eating cheese. I'm gonna be awake for probably until like 3.30. That's when the coffee should hopefully wear off and then I'll try to get some sleep. Thank you. Well, sorry. Thank you chat member for the follow. I try not to shout you out unless you uh, chat before. Oh, you did. Thank you, Koji Bear, for the follow. I, I'm not on top of <laughs> the streaming thing right now. Ugh. Been, according to my time tracker, I've been at this for nearly, actually, coming up on nine hours now. That's pretty crazy. No, I, I was more on top of the vault about three hours ago, <laughs> and now everything is just devolving into dying. Uh, let's do the UI. Let's do UI. Oh god, my my eyes being hard when streaming and coding. <laughs> uh, I, I try to be, I guess, have a coherent train of thought while I'm, you know, programming. So. Trying to think at two thing, trying to think of two things at once. Since that's kind of actually my job, is uh, doing demos and uh, you know. So you're talking to non-technical crowd and you're trying to do technical stuff at the same time. Hmm. So I apologize. The quality of the stream is pretty low right now. I think my own copy is starting to wear off. Trying to finish some code for my stream overlay, but this time I just kind of... Did someone say stream overlay? We. This isn't your standard stream avatars. Let me just... <laughs> flex. <laughs> let's, let's draw the... Let's draw a... Um, something a little bit like that. Oh, baby. Yeah, I, I still need to update my stream thing. Uh, because I think every time I stop and restart it, I do need to get a new OAuth token just using Postman. Which is not the recommended way to do it, 100%. If I just use a like I, I have a title for it. This is called Giant Horse Death Ball. It's a very uh very direct name. Let's do something like this. For now. Hmm. 
Uh, you know what? I don't really want to make the logo now. <laughs> that sounds painful. What if I just go here? We go title menu. We need to have a container for the title. So I'm, I'm using one of the Kenny fonts. Hmm. Oh, we rated team. Hello, hello. Sorry, watching Matrix 2. Matrix 2, I'm very sorry. Isn't Matrix 2, that's the one where Neo... Um, he's fight... Uh, have you have you seen <laughs> Matrix 2, by the way? <laughs> I almost spoiled it. It's not it's XP system, tracks, channel point, redeems. It's going to have like, Titan... Titanfall, Titan Avatars, as well as Timer for Tyra Race Redeems. Oh, baby. I'm not yet first time now. Alright, well, <laughs> I'm glad I did not just <laughs> spoil it. <laughs> Alright, give me one sec. I need to put my cheese back away. I need to stop eating. Two is definitely not the weakest one. I think the Matrix Three is the weakest one, <laughs> but I suppose that's subjective. Yeah, I, I want to extend my system as well with, uh, I guess, additional tracking. Although you do have to be careful, by the way, KT, about uh, I guess audience XP systems, or if you ever store any data about your audience. Technically, I. I feel like you need to comply with um, like the EU whatever laws. So like, if someone requests that you remove their data, you need to have a way to do that. But I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> but I feel like that's a thing. <sighs> so container. Let's see. Hmm. Probably a panel container. Panel container. We'll just kind of drag it over here. Yeah, like on my my Discord bots, I just have a command for you to like delete your your data if you want. So it's oh, it's weird. It's weird. I'm not sure about the laws. You should probably consult someone who knows what they're talking about, as opposed to me, who... saw someone ask about deleting their data once and now just <laughs> assumes that everything needs to be that way, so... Hard to say. Let's see, point... No... Yeah, this is point one. And then this needs to be point six... No, hold on. Point four. Yeah, so this is your title container, and I'll need to create a theme to, I guess, what's the word? I need to create a theme for this, so this is like a lot less ugly. <sighs> I have a way to disable progression tracking, but still has to keep the username in to have the functionality. Oof. Tiny details and data tracking. Yeah, just stores everything in a JSON file so I can just go in and clear it out myself and need be. Yeah. It's actually kind of how Vibor, my Discord thing works. <laughs> uh, talking about Discord stuff though, it's uh. I was trying to update my Discord bot. I was doing some research because I was looking to like, what if I just create like another bot just written in Python that's kind of like a helper bot to my main one? But did you know that Discord is uh, kind of mandating everyone moves over to slash commands by like 2022? And that's why the maintainer of the Discord Pi library has archived the project. Something like that. Pretty neat. Hmm. It's a giant horse death ball. Uh, you know what? Let's let's create the theme now. Let's create the theme now. I might as well. So theme. Hmm. 
here. This is not how this usually works. Or how this usually looks. It's a bit weird. Yeah, I don't recognize this UI. What? What, what is this? <laughs> what? Hmm. Yeah, this is not how themes usually look. I'm a little confused. Not gonna lie. Let's create a new theme and then we edit. It. No. Did it change in Gitto 3.4? Hmm. Very strange. Panel container. And then... Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, I think Godot 3.4 has a, a different UI for this. That's weird. So I, I was confused. Because I'm doing this in Godot 3.3.4 because that one has HTML5 HTML export templates. Hmm. Okay, so this is fine. Let's save this as its own kind of thing. So assets, this is just the main theme. Theme file, there we go. And then we can edit this. Am I crazy? Hey? Oh, you have to edit them here, that's weird. Uh... So style box flat. That's what I usually do for all my uh, panels, I guess. Let's make it a black background. How nice. Corner radius. Yeah, let's give it a corner. Let's give everything like a corner of five. Everyone loves rounded corners. Give it a content margin of 10. Look at that. It is beautiful. Mm, default fonts. Yeah, let's give it a new dynamic font. And then I'm gonna use the, whatever the Kenny fonts I just kind of slapped in here. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I think that's okay. Let's save that. Let's see, this theme, let's save it. And then edit theme, let's add a class item, panel, no, button, that's what we want. Button, styles, oh this is tough, or it's not tough, but it's just tedious. So, style box, flat, background color, mm. make it like a gray-ish kind of thing. Content margin, no. Corner radius, yes. Let's see, corner radius, everyone loves corners. That's pretty good. Let's grab the background color from that. Um, okay, so pressed, we need to have another style box. Slap this in here. So when you press it, it should light up a little bit like that. Probably like a lot. Content margin, no. Corner radius, yes. That was, did I make it 10 or five? <laughs> five, yeah, let's make it 10. There we go. Hover, style box flat. Once again, slap this in here. So you hover, it lights up a little bit. Corner radius, 10. Focus, I guess we're just gonna use... Hmm, I don't know. Just use this one, doesn't really matter. I don't know, I'm just... <laughs> Let's just assign numbers and hope they all work out. That's always a good idea. Honestly, it's great having you as a pace runner. Oh, are you are you kind of like timing yourself based off how fast I'm working? <laughs> uh, I think timing yourself based off how fast I'm working right now is probably not the greatest idea, but I can't stop you. Probably come back to me once I... Uh, regain the rest of my sanity after I take a nap. <laughs> Let's add a theme to this. Did I save that theme, by the way, or did I just lose it? Please tell me I saved it. Okay, cool. 
That's what I thought, but you never know. You never know. Trust no one, especially not yourself. Uh, custom styles. Panel. Let's add a new style box just for this one because I need the fonts to be, I guess, different. So, corner radius 10, 10, 10, 10. Rounded corners. Content margin, we don't really need it. Um, oh, no, we... Hold on. No. This doesn't need a custom one. This label needs a custom one. Oh, with your game, time to sleep <laughs> to begin again in the morning. Uh, thank you, thank you. Good luck to you as well, craft engineer. Craft... Craft... Engineer? Craft engineer, sorry. <laughs> Apologies. I'm delirious, as mentioned a million times before. Good luck on your, uh, your entry. Saludum Dari. Uh, let's see, new dynamic fonts, fonts, boom, boom, and thank you again, once again, for the raid. Let's see, this needs to be bigger, I guess, 26, eh, 32. Filio Hergu is ready, have special effects in story. Nice. No. Title menu, let's bring it back. Yeah, I think this is fine. That looks okay. That's not great. <laughs> it looks okay. Eh. Then I, I saw, I looked at it again, reconsidered. Eh, it's okay. Uh. Hmm. Button, I don't care. Panel container, we can lower the opacity. Yeah, I think that's okay. So we load everything in. Joint, giant horse death ball. So we have new game and quit. New game. We just kind of load in here. Uh, that's all right. That's all right. Just let um all your units kind of like float away. Oh, I still have the duck. Nice. Picked up the the horse again. Look at that. <laughs> I love how they just get punted away. Uh, okay. All right. So there, there's the there's the one UI bit. What else do we need? Title menu. It's really just new game and quit. I think I would like to have metadata at some point, but be but because I'm trying to target um, HTML5 first, it's kind of hard to store user data. So I think it's just gonna be new game for now. Yeah. All right, so test scenario, that's fine. Combat screen, okay, combat screen, let's do that. Canvas layer. This is gonna be our, I guess, combat GUI. So let's add a GUI. Um, probably a panel container. Panel container. That's going to contain, <laughs> um, what is this gonna have? It's just several stats, like, uh... What kind of stats do I want to display? Um... Hard to say. Oh, this is the margin, by the way. It's the wrong thing to edit. This needs to be... Probably 0.8. This will be one. So we'll have like a bottom margin, or I guess a bottom bar. I think that makes sense. Do something like, I don't know. What if we just had like a big bottom bar like that? Right, and since we can now also just slap the theme in there, load assets, main theme. Yeah, 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 yeah. Add a margin to this, a 10. 10, 10, 10, 10. Look at that. That's not bad. That's not bad. So this is just the bottom bar. We'll call it bottom bar. Bottom bar. Um, then we'll have probably two HBox containers inside of that. And then inside of that HBox container are two VBox containers. Yes. Phenomenal. Expand, expand, uh, and then expand, expand. 
Now this bottom bar, we don't want to stop your mouse input. We just want to ignore it because there's nothing that you would really want to click on, I guess. This is mostly just for like stat tracking. Like your current objective, uh, you know, you've killed this many things, kill this many more things. This is your objective. This is how many uh, animals are currently in your death ball, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I guess you would have like pause menu options somewhere else, maybe? Maybe I'll just put them all down here. I'm still considering it, I don't know. This is left, this is right. Uh, and then... I don't know. I mean, how does, how, does, how does this look right now? So I like this, I like this. I think this space, this, the space between the title and the bottom is a bit disconcerting now that I'm looking at it again. <laughs> uh, I'm wasting time. Point 0.9. Okay, now it's consistent at the very least. So boom, boom. Let's click new game. Now we have the bottom bar. It's hard to see the rest of the stuff, but I think that's okay. And then you just get punted away. Okay, so if we have... I don't know, is a bottom bar better than a top bar? I want to say it is better. And then I, maybe like we can have like a, a ticker go across like the very top, a very short ticker that's just like some text being like, um, I don't know, some snarky whatever, a little bit of snark. Hmm. So like maybe we can, I can still incorporate the, uh, I guess the gaslighting <laughs> idea into this game. So like the game is just kind of like actively trying to mislead you, maybe. That might be nice. All right, now we have three horses. Let's take out the farmer if we can. No, don't hit me. All right, and now we feel free all our brethren. I do need to add sound effects as well. Yeah, I think this can be... I don't think I need an entire bottom bar. That's what I think. Maybe I can just have two corner bars instead. So if we go back to combat screen, we have... Hmm. Yeah, what if I just make this a... One of these, like, 0 0.25, uh, maybe 0 0.3, right? Point three, and then we have two bars inside of here. We'll have you know what? <laughs> I think this is already pretty good. Let's let's save state really quick. Get add all. Get status. Get commit. Um, add SFX. Add theme. Alright, I need to I need to recenter. I, I need to <laughs> Give me one sec. Give me one sec. Uh, turn this off. Let's let's uh, let's unwind once again. And by unwind I mean this is one of the first songs I learned <laughs> how to play finger style.
where's my FL Studio thing? I wanna I wanna switch over to making the music. Oh, but I always forget I can't <laughs> I can't stream this. Cause it's not it's just not audible. I'm not able to uh Yeah, like this it's playing. I can hear it. You can't hear it. I mean this is what it's playing though. this and just slap this into audacity is this how that is that how that works I missed a guitar oh I need I need to do something else other than program I'm, I'm losing my mind <laughs> I'm losing it don't show this at startup uh, how do I grab this isn't this in current projects uh, Quick hacker you want to make tracks quickly is using Novation group backs on iPhone. I do not have an iPhone. Uh, I, I do know how to make tracks somewhat quickly, right? So if you want just like a really quick and easy uh, way to generate like electronic music, you can just use one of the, what's it called? Arpeggiator. You can just use an arpeggiator, have some sort of beats, and then just kind of send it. <laughs> oh, you know what I can do? You know what I can do? I can just export the MP3, just send it, it's really quick, then load it into Audacity so that everyone can hear it. So we can annoy the maximum amount of people in the least amount of time. Assets, BGM, MEB. Look at that. It's so quiet though. Oh, there we go. How do I, how do you loop in Audacity? Nope, nope, nope. How do you loop? Um, how do you loop? <laughs> uh, I wanna do, I wanna do music. I don't, I don't wanna program anymore. Send me. All right, Audacity, how, how to, to loop in Audacity. Tutorial, looping, how to make a seamless, no. How to make Audacity play in a loop, yes. S music stack exchange. Click the play button while holding shift, shift space for short. Shift. Nice. Do this. Mm -hmm. 
That's good. Death ball units. That's good. What is this? So this is body. Death ball null. So. Oh. oh. Okay. So when one of the enemy units, okay, th there's a bug. So if one of the enemy units hits, uh, you know, if one of the enemies hits one of your units, but you don't actually have control over them, it will, it'll null pointer. That's cool. So there's a few solutions to this. One, I can have a null check. I think that's probably what I'm gonna do. The other one would be to, no, I. I no, I need to null check no matter what. Okay, so let's do if body uh, dot death ball. Yeah, so if the body has a death ball, then we'll try to. Oh no. Well, no, I think this still works, right? So you can erase something from an array, uh, and if it doesn't exist, then nothing will happen. I think that's fine. Right? But let's go back to this. So. so, if you're at the title screen, how does this feel? I can still make this chip tune. Ugh, I just I just don't, I don't like playing piano. <laughs> I don't really have a good way to play piano either.
maybe for this screen, this would be okay. Maybe for this screen, this would be okay. Also, check this out. I think the reason why the loop isn't perfect, the reason why it's not a perfect loop is because I just need to re-export this and cut the remainder. I think that's probably what needs to be done. So cut the, is it cut reminder? I think it's cut reminder. Then we go here, we'll open, meb, and then something like that. What if I, what if I, what if I, so we go and see here, uh, they, wait, what is this, send it, okay, so we go into plugins presets, I'm just gonna use some of the, <laughs> the really basic stuff, v no, oh I don't have any VSTs installed, uh, okay. This is gonna be somewhat tough. Um, <laughs> uh, don't usually use any of these, but we'll figure it out. So, unsorted. Let's just. I don't know, synth strings are usually pretty good. You gotta do that when you have time, yeah. I mean, they used to be installed, now I'm, I have a new setup. Uh, I had to reinstall everything. Hold on. What does this sound like? No. I guess I can just do what I said I was going to do and just use an arpeggiator. <laughs> we can kind of cheat. Turn this off. Um, also, you can't hear this. But I can hear it. Bring up the Omnisphere. <laughs> I don't know what that Omnisphere is, but uh, I will endeavor to do my best. No, this arpeggiator sounds like I'm in space. I'm not really in space. We're kind of like on a farm. No. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, you know what? Since I'm not actually like playing anything, I'm just <laughs> basically drawing at this point. We can, we can just do, do this. this. Oh, oh god. god. Alright. Uh, I, I can, can hear, hear myself, myself twice. Alright, there we go. No. No. I think that's okay. I can make that work. What does this one sound like? N Ooh, actually, 
Maybe. Trips are twice as fast. Filter cut off. Yeah, sure. I'll no. That's, that's okay. I like. I kind of like that as well. Ooh. I think just the default was not bad though. The default wasn't bad. No. Eh. Uh, no. I'm, I'm I'm leaning towards just chirp two. Ooh. Hmm. Half time it. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. You're very far, like. <laughs> yeah. No. That's the problem with. No. Nothing. Nothing is really jumping out of me except for the chirp. I guess the chip, actually. The last one is like Die Hard on PS1. I've never played Die Hard on the PS1, but I'll take your word for it. No. Oh god. Uh, yeah, that's why I don't use this one. <laughs> that's that, well, that's why I don't use that preset button, is because it's a huge pain. Grunge is probably not what I'm looking for. Yeah, that's more of like a... You know, cyberpunk kind of thing. Growl, probably not. Ooh. 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 I like that. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Something like that. And then we'll just really, really jack it up. Okay, so pattern two. Uh, go ahead. How fast is this? So we're just gonna play, probably just, we're just gonna alternate between A and B. <laughs> I think it's all. Kind of into it. Kind of into it. It's okay. You know what? Screw the guitar. I think we're just gonna do this. <laughs> I don't know how I can make the guitar fit into like a something that's very something like this. This is a this is a bit too arcade like, right? Because you the idea is that you would, you know, you're just trying to smash up stuff. So that's. I don't know. I think whatever I had going on just now, that would be, that sounds pretty, uh, I guess relatively heavy for this, but I have an idea on how I can make that work. Guitar would be overwhelming, yeah. And it just, it just doesn't really fit. I don't really know how I would make the guitar fit. <laughs> so maybe I'll just use a guitar for like exploring melodies, but I don't know. It's also just nice for my own sanity. <laughs> this was very intense. Yeah, it's... I don't know, man. It's, everything is just too intense. Everything is just too intense. Like, this, but this is supposed to be pretty lighthearted. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Growl is okay, though. Growl is okay. What is this? No. Uh. No. I think the problem is that it's too fast. <laughs> I think it, the, one of the problems is that it's a bit too fast. Uh, let's jack it down to... Uh, I don't know, 120. I don't know, that's just, it's just too intense. You're right. Maybe if it wasn't a minor half step, yeah, maybe. Oh, you know what? That's probably it. Uh, I hate that then. 
Yeah, I, I, I thought I did AB, but I, I did, I did oh. AA sharp by accident. My bad. <laughs> I think the minor half step actually sounds better though. It's I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. How was this sound then? Oh, you know what? This sounds very un, un off balance for some reason. I think it's because the the arpeggiator is on a different. Is this arpeggiator like in six eight? <laughs> is this arpeggiator in six eight? I think this arpeggiator is in six eight. One two. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Wait. Like it the 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 way it repeats doesn't sound correct. Right? So it starts at da 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 do do da do. Oh it da 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 do do da da do. Do da 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 do do da do do. Oh yeah, it's in seven. <laughs> it's in. S that's actually pretty good. I, I. Yeah, I think you're right, Rogue Knight. Yeah, I think that's. I think it is in seven. That's very weird. It sounds unbalanced, I'm into it. Uh, so let's try to expand on this. Let's try to expand on this. So how does this sound if I just put hi-hats in? I... Absolutely not. How about a clap? <laughs> no. No, probably... Just keep it up with an 808. That's probably good enough. And then... Yeah, 808's good enough. Uh, and then let's uh, let's look for something else to just slap in here. Go nuts. <laughs> Two step, <laughs> put in the 808. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we could do something like... Uh, just a, a pure... Just garbage for... Some of these are okay. Mm, isn't there like a one of these has a um yeah moogish moogish is not bad. I remember this. So we go to pattern three. Let's slap you in. I don't know. Let's let's still keep it here. I'm still trying to figure out what exactly I want. C A D. This is not D. This is E. <laughs> I don't know how to read keys on the keyboard. I don't know. What if we did something like... Hmm. 
So the reason why I said that this sounds pretty good is because it sounds unstable. Right. So what if I just go all in on that idea? <laughs> I just send me, dude. Uh, so this is already in 4-4. That one is like in a weird... One, two, three, like a seven. <laughs> so it still needs to sound okay. What fits inside four four? Well, no. What what's what fits inside? What if I just write this in three four? So this this track will this moog this synth will be in three four. That'll be fun. <laughs> so this is three. And so we'll just have to have this go for three beats, so that we eventually come back around to being <laughs> on pace. I think that I think that'll be okay. This is supposed to loop back around. <laughs> no, that sounds horrible. <laughs> uh, how do people do like math rock, man? <laughs> when your when your time signatures don't match up, it's kind of hard for things to. I don't know. I, I don't really have a vision for this. I don't know. That, that was. We're getting somewhere, I think. <laughs> we're getting somewhere. What if I just repeat this? Polyrhythms. Math is when you're just too good at music so you want to show off. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds bad. I don't like that. Uh, Alright, plug me back in. Plug me back in. <laughs> Please don't play. All right, turn off the Moog. Let's see if I can figure something out here. Okay, no simple. Uh, I, I like this pattern right here. This pattern is okay because it, it sounds off balance, which is good. guitar straight into the... I can't play guitar straight into FL Studio uh, because the, the delay is really, really bad. Um, but yeah, I, I could. I could add distortion to it. The fruit fly on my wall. Give me one sec. <laughs> I see fruit fly, I must kill it. Ugh. 
I think this this base is okay. Too fast. and triple triplets minor how fast can i play these oh okay that's not bad either I have, I don't I don't know. <laughs> We're doing stuff. No. Absolutely not. No. 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 I hate this. No. <laughs> uh, I want to do the music part, but I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> Bum 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 Maybe? Yeah. Maybe it's just the new Just keep this. <laughs> we'll figure it out. This is the this is an okay place. I'm giving up. You know what? I'm losing it. <laughs> I'm losing it. He's cracked. Uh, he's cracked. I think I'm just going to export this and we'll call it. We'll probably start calling it a night. Take a nap. Yeah. He's unstable. Yes, I'm. <laughs> uh, I've lost it, dude. Cut the remainder. We're just gonna loop this. Oh, you know what? Just add some reverb to it. Why not? 
Uh, real spaces. I like using, I like using this one. I don't know why. Just jack up the reverb. Make your music sound better using this one simple trick. Doctors hate him. <laughs> All right. I think this this track still has potential. This still has potential. It's just that I don't know how to make it fit. <laughs> I don't know how to make it fit. Maybe add a filter to put it farther back. Absolutely not. <laughs> Maybe I should. Maybe I should. What if I just distort it? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, the reverb it? No, wait. Should I reverb and then distort it, or distort it then reverb it? I think I should do it in this order. Jesus Christ. Maybe not. <laughs> Clearly. Hello, save. I think I'm just gonna throw this into here. Uh, combat screen, this is just the combat music and then we can cycle through several types. Uh, so this is audio, stream, player, just a regular one because we want to play in mono. Uh, this should have saved here, so this is MB3, so load, assets, BGM. I don't know, send it. Should... Does this loop? I don't remember. How do I set audio stream players to loop? So we go to audio stream player. Let's see. Bum bum bum. No, no. I think it just loops automatically. I don't remember. Uh, I think this should be fine. So we go here. Maybe not. Oh, don't play here. <laughs> Auto play, sure. Send me. No, you know what? Now that I'm actually seeing it here, this doesn't make any sense. I, I like the idea that it's off balance, but I think, yeah, Anwa, I think you are right. It's a bit too aggressive. <laughs> it's a bit too intense for, I guess, how cartoonish the graphics are. And also, the loop is not a perfect loop for some reason. Yeah, it's a bit too, 100%, it's, it's too aggressive. But too much distortion, maybe. I think I just need to do chip tunes. I need to do a chip tune. I think if I like had grittier graphics, this might work. Hmm. But I, I don't want to redo the graphics at this point. I'm gonna to come to a, a, a an answer now, though. I think I'm. I think I'm tapped. I think I'm tapped. I think what we're gonna do next is finish up the UI. Probably start implementing the rest of the sound effects. Give it as a bonus track, yeah. <laughs> just build in a sound test with all the unused tracks, and really just bloat the. file size. I guess it's okay since I'm not hosting it, so who cares. I, I still like the idea that it's unbalanced. Right, because I have several tracks that are kind of like that. Uh, so we go to my, you know, peep the SoundCloud, you know what I'm saying. What do I have? So, 
my library. Look, it's my SoundCloud. Uh, which one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. This this one's in five four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll try to make something in 5.4 and then that'll that should be hopefully unbalanced enough. I I I don't know. It's this loop. I really like it. Seven four, that's sick. It's just yeah, sleep on it. That's probably that's probably a good idea. That's probably a good idea. Yeah, I don't think I'm I don't think I'm really capable of making creative decisions right now. That's <laughs> that's probably a a fair statement to make. Uh, okay, but what I need to do after this is finish up the UI. Probably try to finish up the second part, which is just like the level select. Uh. And then I'll, I'll figure out the rest of the music later. Maybe I'll just I'll, I'll just need to grab like a VST for like chip tunes. Yeah, because I don't know. Like no, nothing's coming to me right now for how this should sound, except for like unbalanced. But that doesn't really help me. All right. Well, thanks all for tuning in. I'll be live tomorrow actually I guess it's later on today since it's already 3 a.m magical 8-bit magical 8-bit magical 8-bit VST okay we'll see we'll see 1 p.m. here oh baby must be nice magical 8-bit does this cost money? <laughs> okay. It's G oh, it's GPL three. Nice. Okay. I guess we'll just download it now. I guess. Yeah. But anyways, I'll be live later on today, probably sometime in the afternoon, since I have a prior commitment. Well, maybe in the morning, in like uh, five hours. <laughs> uh. No, uh, it's a. Uh, I have to attend a uh, a birthday lunch, so. Uh, I forgot. I forgot that they're on the same weekend. What a pain. Uh, but yeah, I'll be live later on today. Uh, trying to finish up this idea. I think the idea is good. I just need to create more assets. Uh, finish up the entire flow. Basically just finish up the entire game, you know, so the easy stuff. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I have a Discord down in my description below. This face tracking software is free and open source, available on my GitHub. You can find that in my description below, along with this kind of stream avatars lookalike, which is uh, more or less... Uh, yeah, it is, I did write all this. <laughs> what am I talking about? I'm losing my mind. Uh, but yeah. Get my stuff started on GitHub. Blah, blah, blah. Join the Discord. Give me a follow if you haven't already. And let's find someone to, to raid. Who's doing Ludum Dare stuff, I guess? Let's see. Any suggestions from the crowd? Otherwise, we'll try to find another Gado person. So Ludum Dare. Let's find... Someone who's also doing good dough. No, it's just me. <laughs> okay. Well, Garrett Makes is doing some good dough stuff, it looks like. Just isn't using the tag. How unfortunate. Let's send you. Raid. Send it. Alright. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you later. Goodbye.
<laughs> Nine hours, 45 minutes. Oh my god. <laughs>